Hey everyone, this is David. Today let's learn some programming fundamentals that are essential to any languages you might use in the future. Um, data types. After the PowerPoint, we are going to write some code to show you the basic data types in Python. First, we need to take a look at the number system that the computer uses, which is not so different from the one we use every day. The one we normally use and learn at school is called the decimal numbers which is based in 10, meaning that there are 10 digits for us to count from 0 up to 9. Um, hopefully everyone knows how to count since the other number systems count similarly to decimal numbers. There's also the binary number system, which is based in 2, uh, meaning that there are only 2 digits, 0 and 1, for us to count. So we count it similarly to decimal numbers. We do 0, 1, 1, 0 by carrying over a 1, and then 1, 1, and then we carry over a 1 again. So each time we hit 1, it's, it's like we hit a 9. And then if we increment again, we basically carry over the 1 to the next digit. And if you count it in decimal numbers, that would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. Um, there's also the hexadecimal number system, which is based in 16, meaning that there are 16 digits. Besides the normal 0 to 9 that we normally use, there's also A, B, C, D, E, and F, representing 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So um, the way that we represent hexadecimal numbers is to put a 0x before the number. To show you, uh, to show the others that you need to read this as a hexadecimal number. Um, so, if we want to convert a number from hexadecimal number to decimal number, we would do the following way. For example, if you uh, have a number that's six two f, you would do six times sixteen to the power of two, two times sixteen to the power of one, and f times sixteen to the power of zero. So you will get 1583 in decimal number. Uh, if you think of, if you think how we represent decimal numbers, it's the same way actually. A, a decimal number 625 is represented. Uh, it's actually, it's actually six times ten to the power of two, plus two times ten to the power of one, plus five times ten to the power of zero. So it's the same thing. That, that would help you to remember how we convert a hexadecimal number to a decimal number. And the reason that the programmer use hexadecimal number very often is because each digit of hexadecimal number can represent four digits of binary number. So we would write, and binary number are often used in computers. So we would write, um, the numbers in a much shorter version instead of writing a lot of digits on a, on a paper or in a computer program. Um, after understanding the number system, we can understand the basic of how data are represented in computers. So in short, computer uses bits, which have only two states um, on and off corresponding to one and zero. A lot of you might heard of gigabytes Terms like gigabytes, megabytes, kilobytes. Um, so each byte is eight bits, and we—that's how they are being converted. One gigabyte is two to the power of ten megabytes. It's two to the power of twenty kilobytes. It's two to the power of thirty bytes, and it's two to the power of thirty times eight bits. So that's two to the power of thirty-three bits, which is a number close to ten billion. That gives you an idea of how much data we are being stored in one gigabyte of space. And everything in a computer is represented using only ones and zeros. Even, even the photos or even the computer programs or even the web pages that you browse through every day. Um, so you might want to ask, how does the computer read the zeros and ones into different things like photos? Um, the, in general, 
it uses data types to understand the data. And, but if we dive into deeper levels, like the hardware level or the computer system levels, there are, all, there are also other mechanisms. But in programming languages, we use data types. Um, for example, 10101010 can mean different things if we represent it with different data types. It can be a character or it can be a tiny part of a photo, a tiny information of the photo, or it can be, it, or it can represent the number itself. Um, the common data types that are used by most common programming languages are string, which is consists of characters and integers, a float, and double is a variation of float. Um, and boolean and list, there are also other data types that are often used, but we are going to focus on the basic ones first. If you still remember that we put print uh, the way that we print hello world in the last video by putting quotation marks around it, that's exactly the way we represent strings. In general, most programming or most common programming languages use double quotes to represent strings. And, and in Python, we can also use single quote. Um, single quote. Um, it's kind of a useful feature, and we'll sh uh, and we'll we'll be able to see it in the future. Um, and as we talked about it before, the string is consists of different numbers, certain number of characters. It can be um, no characters, so it will be an empty string. It can consist of like 11 characters in the case of Hello World because it has 10 characters and also a space. Space is one of the characters as well. And each character is often represented in one byte, which is the which is also called the ASCII number, ASCII character system. Um, this system is to represent each character, including like signs or numbers using uh, binary numbers. So for example, 0x61 is representing A, the character lowercase a. 0x2e is representing the dot. So if you give, you, you, you tell the computer that 0x 612e is a string. The computer would read it as a dot. Um, there's also integer. Integer um, is also referred as int um, in the programming languages. Um, is very similar to how we use integer in the in the in daily life. So usually it's represented as thirty in thirty two bits, if not specified. Otherwise, um, the range of an integer, a 32-bit integer, is from this number in the negative all the way up to this number in the positive. That's two to the power of uh, two to the power of 32 numbers in total. And the reason that uh, the negative numbers count up to eight, and the positive number only count up to seven, is because zero is being included as part of the non-negative number. So there are 2 to the power of 31 negative numbers and 2 to the power of 31 non-negative numbers in the normal integer representation. There are also other integer types. There's unsigned integers. In this case, we would um, we basically we basically count from zero all the way up to 2 to the power of 32 minus 1. And there's also 64 bits. So the range of integers are are much larger than the 32 bits integers and there's also 8 bit integers which might be used as representing characters or other case when we um, want the integers to be space efficient so float is called floating point number which also use 32 bits. Um, basically, the way that you understand it is numbers with decimal point. 
For example, 3.0 is a float, 3.5 is a float, but 3 is an int. Even though 3.0 and 3 might um, be equal from our understanding, but the computer would take 3.0 as a float. Um, and there's also double. Double is the 64 bits version of floating uh, of float, which since we double the bits, we also double the precision of the number it represents. And Boolean um, is a very important data type as well. It only has two values. One is true and the other is false. It is critical for programs to make decisions using Booleans. Uh, for example, if you want to check someone is someone is age of 12, um, you will check the statement, evaluate it to true or false first, and then make decision based on the value of true or false. Um, the Boolean logics is very similar to our human logics. For example, like 2 smaller than 3 is true. Uh, zero, point, 0 times 5 is greater than 0 is false. And then we are going to take a look at the operators that we may use on these data types. Um, the arithmetic, all, all of these, uh, the arithmetic and comparison operators are often used on numbers, but it can also use on different data, different other data types as well, like strings or lists. Um, these are quite simple. Uh, plus or minus is just normal ones. That is the time sign, and that's the float floating point division sign and the two the double time sign is to the power of third number and the double division sign is integer division and the person percentage sign is module mod, modular is finding the remainder of the division division operation and the unary minus and the unary plus are basically same as uh, the negative sign and the positive sign. The comparisons are quite simple too. It's less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. And that is checking for equality. And that is checking for not equal. Uh, note that we, we don't have um, the single equal sign right here because the single equal sign is being used as part of the assignment operation instead of um, comparison. We'll see that maybe in the next video or so. Um, there's also logical operations and or and not used on the Booleans. And there are also other types of operators we might be able to see in the future. So let's dive in into uh, using these data types and operations in, in Python.